G'day folks. Well, I've decided to tackle the uh, temperature sensor problem in the uh, plasma screen television and I've pretty much tracked it down right here. I've just got to pull the, pull the digital board out and find it in real life but we have temperature sensor IC with there's a 10k resistor going into it as well as two 100 ohm resistors uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor and both of these pins here are grounded so it could be one of these little SMD caps or resistors but I'd say more than likely it's the sensor itself at least I hope it's as simple as that if not it could be something further on sending a false signal but I'll start here temperature sensors are cheap enough as it is and just go from there Okay, well I've got the board out of the set. It's actually a combination of the analog board on the underside and the digital board on the top side. The rest of that's all fine as it is. Okay, this is the underside of the board. I'm guessing my temp sensor is on the other side. Well, time to take it out. Okay, well what we're looking at now is the digital board. We have what appears to be a bank of RAM chips up the top. Main processor. I think up here one of these little gadgets is our temperature sensor. And various other components. Now what does that other one say? IC2510 is our temperature sensor. Okay, well I found my little IC here. It's uh, that one right there. That's the temperature sensor. It works in conjunction with the chassis or panel temperature sensor which plugs in here and is wired to the top of the panel. And both of these ICs here process that signal and if there is something wrong they throw up an alarm to the power supply and shut the power supply down. Which is basically what this says here. We have AC detection and temperature alarm coming off and going up to the uh, main PSU connector. And that plugs in temp sensor up there. It's down and in conjunction with this one here which is what I was just looking at and that's the problem I believe well, that's where I'm going to start so I'm going to look up my component directory and just see whether I can order one here in Australia we should be able to not like some manufacturers where they don't print the name of the bloody component on them at least this one here it tells you what it is I tried to fix a Kenwood amplifier surround sound system and they didn't print the type of the op amp on the chip so I couldn't actually replace it and get the audio working again it wasn't very nice of Kenwood to do that they wanted a whole new board for a few hundred bucks or nothing but this time I can fix this one oh, thanks for watching folks I'll post an update later I'm just getting set up with the uh, electronics repair equipment so I can do the digital board for the plasma television I'm going to do a bit of practice work on this old modem These. ICs here are about the same size as what I'm removing. So I'm going to practice taking a few of them off. Uh, obviously this is scrap now. Nobody uses 56k dial-ups. So I'll practice taking some components off. I've never really done SMD parts before. And once I've got the uh, skill up a bit, I'll tackle the main board. Which is this one here. I've got a couple of down lights in place. I'm just trying one at the moment using a uh, little 12 volt transformer uh, naturally a good good lighting freshly ground soldering iron tip old solid copper I'll tin that up and just do a bit of practice this is just a uh, practice run with an old Pentium 4 main board that I've got the board scrap so I'm going to try taking some of these parts off and my old instructor at the electronics shop taught me to use conventional fuse wire for this job but 
that was back when SMDs were big enough to fit fuse wire underneath. So I've got some of this really fine stainless steel wire. And the trick is to draw it out under the pins. And the stuff is slippery as hell, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that on camera. Or lift one side up. Not too far though. worst thing is to pull the traces off in the process. Probably actually better to put a swipe of solder across the pins so that they all heat up evenly. But they're alright. I'll have to go and buy some solder wick before I do this. some finer solder too. You can just sort of swipe across them with the solder wick anyway. I don't have any so I'm making a mess here. Let's try another one. Just clean and tin the soldering iron. Got a bit of wire wrapped around it again, but this time I'll tin the legs a little bit. Just got to be careful not to release any components nearby. The old one, it doesn't matter if you really overheat it, just as long as you don't cook the board underneath. Traces are still there. You know, we get a, a bit of solder wick to pick that up. A proper SMD tool kit is roughly ten thousand dollars. That's for the professional model anyway. The good one. The cheaper ones, well, will be a lot less. But I don't have that kind of money for this job. But this technique seems to be working just fine. The device comes off it intact. I'll try and clean one of these up and reinstall it. And let's do one last one. up the tension on the wire but otherwise it's fine. Oh, that's good. Well the camera got in the way so I had to lose it but the component came off just fine. The pads are all cleaned up and I'll get my replacement chip. I actually ordered two because they're only a dollar forty each. I'll get the replacement chips uh, in the next day or two. I'm going to chuck one on and go from there. Oh, well. thanks for watching, folks. Hope you found this interesting. Because uh, I know I found that nerve-wracking, but, oh, no, well. that's just doing the things for the first time. It's good. Look forward to more surface mount repairs.